Yeah, Narendra Modi's strange relationship with Putin. <laughs> We're going to talk to Rupmati Kandakar, who joins us from New York. She's associated with the United Nations, and she's Indian, and she follows these events. Um, but first, the news, Rupmati. Um, I want to talk about the, the border skirmish, because that's how you and I first met, talking about the border skirmish. Uh, what happened in the Him Himalayas yesterday? Good afternoon, Jay, and pleasure to join you and think back a while about this. And so Himalayas, we'll come back a full circle and we are talking of the Himalayan dispute, isn't it? So uh, Galvan, we spoke about last time. That was one of the um, issues that highlighted how uh, Moscow's diplomacy helped India and China settle a very uh, fiery a spark, which could have gone into fire. So we have something of this border dispute. I told you before that the border in India was left undefined by uh, Prime Minister, the erstwhile Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru. And that causes a problem because uh, it's mountainous. And so these disputes are going to keep on arising till we find a, a, a properly uh, demarcated uh, borderline. We don't have it. And Jay, it will continue for a long time, I think. So Modi is working on it. And so let's talk about Modi, how he is doing in international relations now. Yeah, well, Xi Jinping claims it. Um, yeah. He claims everything, you know. I, it's yes. extraordinary how much he claims. And yeah. um, Modi doesn't want to let him have it. And so you have troops up there. And if, if the yes. uh, Chinese go over the line, what do they call it? The actual line of control which is really yes, not a border, so much as de facto border. Right. Um, and the Indians come and say, no, you've got to leave now. And then they and then they have fights about it. And they had one fight, which I think was after we first discussed it in 2020, where yes. people were actually killed. Because up to that yes. point, there was a gentleman's understanding that you didn't use weapons. That yes, the, fight. the fights up there on the border was just pushing and tugging and smacking the other guy around without a weapon. But in 2020, there were fatalities. Correct. Uh, well, those happened because of the people who fell off the cliff also, Jay. And they uh -huh. use uh, those clubs uh, with barbed wires and all that. Firearms are not allowed within uh, two kilometers of the LAC. That is an understanding between both the countries. And they mm -hmm. keep it that way. But India's problem is that uh, till now, we did not have uh, roads and um, strategic routes to reach these borderlines. So it was the people who, the regiment that is posted in that area to defend that area. We did not have reinforcements coming in and backing up uh, these places. So we were at the mercy of the, China has a relatively, see they have an upper slope. In combat, when you have the uh, vantage point, uh, the higher point, elevation point, you are, a, you are at a vantage point. So as compared to the people who are below. So India mostly has a disadvantage at this because we are the low-lying area. The high points are occupied by the Chinese. So um, uh, we did not have uh, immediate military backups. Now, after Modi decided to develop villages and uh, the routes, the entire, uh, he has given a very broad perspective that you develop the entire area around it. So the people have got an aff affinity towards the country. If you feel Indian, you are going to not allow the Chinese to come in. If you if you're left to the uh, elements, you are going to go to whichever person rules you. So that is the strategy that is adopted by this government since uh, to, since they are elected. So um, developing the Himalayan terrain has been a focal point. And uh, because it is such an um, undefined LAC uh, line of actual control, we don't. We will keep on having, this is my, uh, the claiming of uh, lands by both the sides. So, um, and I'll tell you, uh, Jay, it's a good diversion from uh, domestic politics, don't you think that? When, uh, well, well she... you know, one thing that I noticed in my reading was that uh, Narendra Modi is trying to build up the military in yes. India. He wants yes. a stronger military. He wants to spend more money on it. I guess he, he wants to uh, de deter uh, China from doing things like this. Um, and then he wants the world to know that he's a, he's a power. 
And indeed, you know, it wasn't too long ago when the United States, which had better relations with him then, uh, it gave him the secrets to the nuclear bomb. Um, so India is a nuclear power. Yes. And, and so that's pretty serious uh, when he says he's going to build up the military. What kind of reaction are, do people have to that? Uh, see, uh, uh, the U.S. and India, we have a quad uh, mechanism which is in place. Uh, Australia, Japan, India, and U.S., where we conduct military exercises in the China Sea. And that is a direct, direct uh, uh, combat uh, mechanism to uh, deter, or rather, it's a deterrent for Chinese aggression. So once you know you have these big naval powers, uh, China feels threatened and feels pressurized. U.S.-India cooperation is very strong in terms of being two of the largest democracies. And uh, uh, understanding between uh, both the countries has been, even when India was non-aligned, even when India has a strategic partnership with, the, with Russia, U.S. and India still maintain very close ties. I told you last time, U.S. has the biggest Indian diaspora and uh, a friendship with the United States is always been uh, beneficial for India. And uh, also, it is um, uh, we have uh, supplies from the U.S., um, trade with the U.S., um, you know, uh, strategic partnerships with the U.S. So this is uh, two friends of mutual understanding. Good. That works. Uh, I, I want to be friendly with India. I like India. You know <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So now um, we have the um, we have the meeting with Putin, and yes. we have a, a picture of a government picture of uh, Putin's uh, meeting um, with uh, Narendra Modi last year, a year ago. And there they are. I, I'm not sure. I guess that took place in Moscow. Um, yes. So the question is, and this has been going on on an annual basis. They should meet, you know, they should they should catch up with each other, I suppose, and, and make sure that their relationship is good. But um, a lot has happened since last year. And in fact, that meeting didn't take place this year. And my understanding is that Narendra Modi said, no, I don't want to meet with you. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure why. What What is the reason and what is the reaction? Okay, so this happens on an annual basis and missed only two times uh, since then, uh, since 2020 because of the pandemic and now. Now the excuse given this time is because they met in September in Uzbekistan, they don't need to have a tete-a-tete -tete right now. But you see, right now, India is assuming the presidency of the G20. So he wants to be in as much as a non-controversial position as possible. So, uh, I mean, Putin understands and uh, uh, Modi and Putin have been uh, veterans in global politics. So they have had, a, an, a, like, they have dealt with each other since a long time, almost um, a decade now. And uh, you see, Jay, uh, India and Russia have been strategic geopolitical partners since the Cold War. But India and Russia are such, nor Russia dominates India's friendship with the US, nor India dictates uh, Rus uh, Russian friendship with China. So you see, uh, each one can have put their own path, but they make sure that they consider the other friend as a priority, or at least at the back of the head, always. So uh, now, because of the Ukraine crisis, um, Modi categorically told them in the G20 summit, this is not an era of war. That was his statement. And he explained that in Uzbekistan. And he said it doesn't have to be um, uh, war. It can be, uh, you know, you have to think about uh, what are the uh, uh, terrorism, climate change, and pandemics are going to be the next uh, priority areas uh, for the coming um, political maneuvers, not war. So he de demeaned uh, Putin in a way uh, publicly. But uh, continuing relation with, he is not part of the sanction regime against the Russian. 
Yeah, that, that, when you take that all together, and so it, it looks like a problem. Tell me if it's not. I mean, he's he hasn't joined the sanctions. Uh, he's been buying uh, gas and oil from Putin, uh, undermining yeah. the sanctions from Western Europe, um, and um, and and you know now this uh, where. Um, and more and more, it appears that uh, he's friendly with Putin, and um, and not so friendly with the with Western Europe and the U.S. So I'm I'm, I'm a little worried about where that goes. Um, you say that he, you know, India has long had a policy of um, talk with everybody, you know, yes. maintain relations with everybody, don't don't make enemies and all that. But um, he, I think he's going to get plenty of heat about this. About not discussing uh, the uh, you know the Ukraine invasion at the G20 meeting. Um, what what's the reaction in India? I, I think in in the U.S. it's not a good reaction. But what about the reaction in India? Modi discussed uh, Ukraine in the G20 summit, but the majority of the leaders, other leaders under Indonesia's presidency, they said. <laughs> We should discuss economic issues rather than uh, uh, Ukraine. He gave a statement in the G20 that war is not the way to go ahead. But uh, you see, Jay, Russia is one of our biggest weapon supplier. Russia is one of um, uh, the Indian trade in oil has increased by 170% to reach $17 billion in, since February, since 11 months of the invasion of Ukraine. It has gone one seventy percent, and but it is still lesser than what Europe is buying from Ukraine. Okay, but uh, you see, what the argument is that Europe has left buying from Russia, so they buy from the Middle East. When they buy from the Middle East, the Middle East prices go up, and India, as one of the largest populated countries. And with the economy which can trigger into recession and affect a billion people, they prefer to buy oil and keep... See, Indian economy is very steady right now. In the face of economic recession, Indian economy is doing well. He is looking at national interests rather than uh, uh, geopolitical uh, considerations because he has a billion mouths to feed. Okay, but not... let me... Let me... <clears throat> Couldn't he take another position? Let... Just, just talk creatively for a moment. Yes. Um, if, if you were Narendra Modi and you said, gee whiz, you know, the destruction of Ukraine is the destruction of the global world order, the liberal world order. We are a democracy. We are the okay. largest Asian democracy for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe the largest democracy in the world in terms of people. Um, yes. We cannot afford to have the liberal world order disturbed, um, mm -hmm. especially with people like China, you know, uh, at our borders. Um, we don't want anybody taking our territory like what happened in Ukraine, including Russia. So <clears throat> just suppose, just between you and me, suppose we, we wanted to advise Narendra Modi, say, look, there's a better way here. There's a better way to, to be moral, to be, you know, to protect the global world order, to call a spade a spade, not to let Putin get away with this uh, really horrendous, um, you know, mm -hmm. Uh, war crimes invasion. Uh, wouldn't that work too? I know he's got a lot of mouths to feed. He's over 1.3 billion. Um, yes. But 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 at the same time, can he find a way to ally with the West on this instead of with Putin, who is a monster and who mm -hmm. is killing people, you know, for sport? Um, and so, you know, the, the question is, um, does Narendra Modi have to do this? Or could he take another position uh, without losing, you know, political mm, leverage in India? See, it, it's a, a twofold answer to this because uh, we are in the eleventh month of the Ukraine fight, and eleven months is almost like a long, long time. And uh, destruction is at its peak, and they are not stopping. There is no relenting because we are seeing cities being burned. But uh, you see. Uh, Indian dependence on oil is for economy based. Um, there's no heavy manufacturing as Europe does it. Europe uses oil and gas for heating homes and manufacturing, heavy industries uh, manufacturing. But India uses it for a basic infrastructure. So rising prices uh, of oil and gas affect each and every individual's uh, household needs. 
So, and because we are a democracy and not a dictatorship, he is elected pan-India from the population. If he doesn't uh, uh, take care of the inflation, recession, Indian economy will go into a spiral downward. So there is no way out. If you're getting competitive price rates, you will go for this. Diplomatically, when you look at it, the second side to it, that if you look at it diplomatically, India has, uh, India, uh, Russia has been a strategic partner at diplomatic forums, even when it was a superpower. So a strategic partnership with Russia has been on the UN summit when they have vetoed uh, resolutions passed against India. They have been in uh, in uh, lowering uh, tensions with China. And uh, Russia and India have a pact that if anybody goes to war, the other person comes to help. So that kind of blind friendship is uh, very important for any country. And with Russia, China, and India, you have oil supply. You have one of the biggest market and you have one of the biggest uh, manufacturers. They are trying to form a triangle which is very self-sufficient. And US, as the hegemon of the world order, they need to step up and uh, uh, the conflict is basically between Europe and Russia. Everybody needs to mediate diplomatically. Militarily uh, supplying each uh, these countries is just going to fuel it. I told you last time, everybody, we had the UN General Summit in September. How uh, emphatically was the resolution passed that we have to stop this war? Why didn't it happen that there's a responsibility to protect like the countries came together as a community to protect in Libya? Why couldn't they do the same thing in Ukraine? So this kind of strategic determination is not in the interest of any country. Russia is selling its oil. <laughs> US is also selling the oil. Uh, you know, you have uh, all the economies functioning. But when you go verbally, you are condemning Ukraine and letting it be. The fighting is still on. There is, it requires a military resolution. Everybody needs to come together militarily to come and stop it. I mean, just supplying few weapons to Ukraine is not going to uh, not going to balance out uh, Russia. I mean, you look at the map and you you see the size of Russia. Oh, Can Russia's economy is uh, is failing over the sanctions. Yeah. Russia Russia is in trouble. Um, yes. Russia Russia will come out of this uh, a lot less uh, powerful and influential than it might have been. Um, right. In terms of Russia's uh, place in history, this is a huge huge mistake. So, question: Why doesn't um, Narendra Modi um, support the Ukrainians by money, by arms. Why doesn't he talk to his friend Putin and say, why don't you stop this? This isn't helping you. Uh, we want to be friendly with you. We want to have mutual defense pacts. And I'd like to discuss that further. Um, why don't, why, you know, hey, friend to friend, stop it. It's bad news. Why doesn't that happen? But it, what it looks like to the world is that he is consistently supporting Putin in an illegal and, um, you know, horrible war. Why, why doesn't he take some action to show that he recognizes it's a bad war, Putin is making a mistake? Right now, uh, Putin is so inflammable, he needs the international community to come as a whole to, uh, to stop him. It can't be one country, it can't be two countries. It has to be a community of nations who come together well-determined and with a, a military resolution that if you pass this line, we are coming in between. Send troops of all countries to Ukraine to stop. You cannot put, uh, you know, uh, you cannot supply them military uh, um, through, you know, uh, bits and pieces. It can't be passes. It has to be a, a complete blockade. That's that not likely to happen, though, that you know, because Putin no. tries to divide countries. Uh, he's using social media now um, to disrupt um, the, uh, the, you know, the political views of Germans, um, right. and he wants them to divide against migrants and all that, including migrants yes. from Central Asia. And yeah. so, uh, you know, what's happening is Putin himself 
divides the global community. It is not likely the global community can come together. It's it's a matter of uh, standing up and speaking truth. And so we, you know, we are hoping that all um, countries that are not autocratic themselves, especially democracies, will stand up and speak the truth. But India doesn't seem to be doing that. And India votes with China in the Security Council. Yes. Uh, and it doesn't condemn Russia. And it, it takes no action to um, use the power of the United Nations, however minimal that is these days, um, mm -hmm. to stop Putin's uh, war. So, I mean, you know, in, India is leaving itself exposed on a moral basis, don't you think? Yes, that's absolutely right. A single-minded determination is lacking in all the countries. See, uh, even European countries, they started accepting Russian oil and gas immediately. I mean, the, the, the conflict is on. They will condemn it, but there will be supply of oil and gas. So if you want to, you want to do a sanction policy, it has to be comprehensive. It can't be selective that one country will do it. And uh, see, suppose if the sanctions were accepted by India and India stops using Russian oil and they accept uh, Middle Eastern oil at higher prices, takes it, and Europe continues to accept oil from Russia. Would that be right? That would be selective, isn't it? That mm -hmm. they get the oil from Russia, but uh, India stops uh, using the oil. So where's the pressure? The pressure has to come when it's comprehensive. The pressure cannot be selective. And uh, just because you are in close proximity uh, to Russia doesn't mean you depend on them. Then you have to use better routes to uh, change the supply. But mm -hmm. one country uh, just alone cannot do it. Yeah, and I understand. So wh what about, uh, and, and, that's, and that's what Putin wants. So he wants to divide up yeah. the, the global community. Um, you mentioned that that uh, Putin has a uh, um, what do you want to call it a, a mutual defense pact with India. Yes, uh, and that goes back way back because uh, right. you know there was a time when Russia was supporting India uh, in a moment of need. I forget exactly what the moment of need was, but he was supporting India with weapons and the like and yes. support in general. Pakistan uh, rivalry they come in always. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you know there's a historical connection there. <clears throat> so when you talk about a mutual defense pact, though, you really wonder. So so I guess the deal would be that if anybody came, uh, anybody uh, attacked India, that Russia would help defend India, and that would work yes. in India's favor. But let me ask you a question, Rupmati. Who in the world, who in the world is <laughs> is going to attack India? Oh, Pakistan, China, we have had how so many wars. We have had uh, multiple wars with them, with our neighbors. We have adverse neighbors. So we have a problem with, uh, and um, uh, Russia acts as a deterrent to them because Russia keeps China down. Otherwise, you would have had a very aggressive China. The communism card is played by Russia and China is kept underhand. I mean, <laughs> they do their part in this. And um, strategically, uh, Russia has always helped to veto the resolutions which Pakistan used to put under uh, for India, even in the times of war. And Ukraine has voted pro-Pakistan against India. So diplomatically, they have always gone against India. I told you this, that will be a consideration in many of the things if they did not support this tit for tat kind of a thing. So uh, strategically and diplomatically, Ukraine has been on the side of the adversaries rather yeah, than- I got the... it. So, that, so actually that's the flip side of, the, the, flip... of the mutual defense pact. So yes. Putin, Putin says to India, look, we have a mutual defense pact. And you know, those, those you know, Ukrainians, they're so mean to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> they, they resist and resist my invasion. I need your help uh, because, you know, just as uh, I have promised to give you my help, you have to give me your help, India, now. Is that part of it? Is this part of the mutual defense pact between the two countries? CJ, having oil being supplied at low prices, 
but they are not giving it according to Indian terms. Do you know that? They are not, uh, India is asking for it to be dealt in Indian rupees. They refuse. Russia refuses to do that. Russia wants the uh, ruble to uh, come uh, up, you know. So uh, you want um, this monetary hurting is hitting U.S. recession. And UN, uh, U.S. hegemony in this is very important because, you know, it's up to the U.S. to gather this diplomatic, um, um, what is that, uh, jingoism. It's not happening. We don't have a very fervent and, you know, potent leadership which will do this. It has always been the U.S. which has garnered everybody's support. Okay, come on, let's do this. Let's direct. Let's lead. That leadership is lacking. And that is where all this is you When the class monitor is not good, the class goes into chaos. This is exactly what is happening now. Yeah. The leader what what is, about that $60, $60 per barrel cap? that uh, Joe yeah. Biden is trying to implement. Does that, does that help? Does that alleviate the problem in any way? Uh, does it, how does it affect Indian policy with regard to Russian oil and gas? It, see, Middle East is uh, benefiting from this when they are able to uh, supply uh, European markets rather than Russia. So everybody is benefiting in their own way. And the cap, uh, it has to, uh, I'll tell you one thing, Jay, the oil producing cartel is a very strong cartel and they have very, uh, the goal is just for more money. So they are very ruthless in their approach when they're selling oil. For them, diplomatic, uh, military, loss of life, it doesn't make any sense to them. They just want their dollars, they want their oil cap, they want their uh, money to come into the account. So. This kind of selfish mode which has taken place in uh, the international system is because everybody is pursuing their own mini goals rather than looking at the entire global community and global. The first priority of every nation has to be stop war. Is that happening? We have summits going on. We have the UN summit. We have the G20 summit. We have bilaterals. We have multilaterals. Which statement has said stop war? They just say, uh, do not do little bit war. Do, the war is not good. This is not good. But nobody has come in support. And I told you, one person cannot stop. One country cannot stop Putin. It has mm. to be a comprehensive effort. Okay, so we have US discussed this before. We'll probably discuss it again, Rupmati, because it's dynamic. Things change. You know, Ukraine changes. Uh, Putin's relationship with the Russian people changes. Uh, a lot of them are leaving in protest and so forth. But query, uh, is, is what you and I have been discussing, is that known to the average Indian person in India? Um, do, I, you know, it's a, it's a First Amendment country, for sure. Um, and the newspaper, there are many newspapers that presumably report all this. Everything that you and I have said presumably is known to the average Indian citizen. How do they feel about Modi? How do they feel about Modi spending money on the military? How do they feel about Modi um, supporting Russian oil and gas? And and uh, how do they feel about India voting with um, voting with uh, Putin? Um, you know, in the Security Council, how do they feel? Uh, see, Jay, after eleven months of fighting in Ukraine, Ukraine has become a regular column in all the newspapers, isn't it? Everybody has normalized it. Loss of life has been normalized. Uh, making India a good military and good, you know, strengthening Navy, Army and uh, Air Force has been a need for India because our fleets are outdated. And uh, we need a, a modernization of technology because we have two enemies <laughs> who have gone for previous wars. So we have to defend, we have borders to defend. So that becomes uh, a priority and the Indian public is very happy with him for doing this because patriotism is, uh, it, it appeals to every, every individual. And uh, uh, secondly, voting for Putin, Putin has always been uh, Russia. When you say Russia to an Indian, he feels friend. US to Indian, they feel friend. 
they don't uh, they don't bring uh, the dynamics of international politics into this so for them uh, what is happening in the un is uh, of little relevance how do they feel about what's happening in american government because uh, you know just just uh, like um, all these events you and i have been talking about including the success of the indian economy right now um, yes. <clears throat> um they must read about um all of the machinations uh, of the Republican Party and and Trump and his friends in the United States, which, uh, you know, you alluded to that earlier, because it's it's hard to have confidence in, you know, in the continuing goodwill and assistance of the American government globally. Uh, so okay. so query, how do the people in India feel about about the, the problems in American government? Trump got a thumping, uh, 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 what is that, warm welcome in India. You remember that? It was the, one of the biggest, I think, bigger than what Nixon had or something like that. I, Eisenhower, somebody had. So uh, he was very happy with the Indian public and the Indian public loved his uh, flamboys <laughs> and everything. What he does in India, uh, US politics is never an uh, issue because they love a good leader. And uh, for that, uh, he enjoyed India a lot. Uh, the, uh, the reception that he got was uh, jubilant, rather than um, who, who was you he? See? Who, who, huh? What what president are you talking about? <laughs> Trump. Trump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, well, he you know, Ruth Marty, we, we have a in Varanasi. We have a correspondent as a huh. student. I don't know if I told you this before. Yeah. And uh, I asked him at the beginning of the Trump uh, administration uh, what he thought about Trump. Did he like Trump? And this will be very interesting to you. He said, yeah, I like Trump. And I said, why do you like Trump? He says, because, quote, because he is strong, end quote. And so <laughs> that may be a common view in India, no? Yeah, I mean, I told you, they think it's, you know, it's it's the uh, the mannerisms, the flamboyism. The politics is, takes a second uh, stage because you like the leader who's coming. He will do uh, antics which, you know, please the public. Or oh, you know his uh, speech and a stadium full of people cheering Trump, Trump, Modi, Modi. You imagine the jubilation that he has, the happiness that he had. So uh, he is the Indian diaspora uh, supporting him. You know that kind of um, the charisma that the Indian public brings out in a leader is different. You have a cheering crowd, so they really don't give a second thought to the politics behind the leader. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's almost time, Rupmati, for you to write another book and yes. straighten this out for the, uh, you know, the average Indian person. And I will be happy to help you write that book. Ah, let's go. <laughs> let's do it. Rupmati Khandakar, who writes a lot of books uh, associated with the United Nations and follows events all over the world, including in India, of course. Thank you so much, Rupmati, for this very interesting discussion. Thank you so much, Jay. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Always a pleasure. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.